Big Al's Rant with Caden McFarland, powered by Jack Cassie Ford. Hello, my friends, and welcome to halftime of the NFL game with the Denver Broncos leading Kansas City 20-7 with Caden McFarland, Al Jerkins here. First topic of conversation. It's cold in Kansas City, obviously, but the hot topic happens to be the future of TU football. And in a nutshell, as of right now, TU has not made it official one way or the other as to whether or not they are retaining Bill Blankenship, as that continues to be a story. Um, let me start out by saying after the game on Friday, I just felt that everybody was in a funeral mode. Sure, yeah. And I was it, saying maybe we should be wearing black tonight. Well, um, and, and when asked why his team only won five games in the last two years, I thought his Bill Blankenship's reasoning was not completely, how do I put it? Yeah. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't buy the excuses. I got okay, you. Okay, because of the injuries, you know, and all that other stuff. And He said mostly it, inexperience. <clears throat> right. And then he mentioned the injuries as well. And I don't know if that's good enough to go into an athletic director's office and when you sure. evaluate the season and you come up with those reasons, I think it'd be hard for the University of Tulsa to say, well, you know, we'll give you another yeah. shot. That's just, uh, now listen, for those of you out there that think we enjoy talking about this stuff, we don't. Yeah. This is not fun for us to have to discuss these situations. But uh, we're paid to come sure. up with our opinions as well. And from this standpoint, I think it would be really tough for the Bill Blankenship era to continue it. In this instance, it's especially no fun to talk about because Bill is as good a guy as right. there is, and he's been fantastic to us. And I, know I would love to say emotionally, yeah, give him another chance. Sure. But when you write it all down and say yeah. wins and losses and who's coming back and like that, I don't know if you can make yeah, and, and I think, the future. I think maybe that's the most damning thing, is that when I look at next year's team, even though they are young and they return 17 starters and Dane Evans put up good numbers and Keevan Lucas is really a good player, I still don't think I see a team that wins more than four or five games next year, uh, which if you play it out, I think at the end of five years, that probably would not be enough. Now, I'll say this, because th that is the big question, right? It, the question is, should Tulsa bring back Bill Blankenship? Uh, I would say this. I find it very hard to come up with football reasons why. Mm -hmm. He won a conference championship, two good years, two not good years at all. Uh, so it's not like it's been just a disaster or a, a tire fire. Uh, winning that conference championship should factor in, I think. It's proven that he can win at a certain level. But it is hard to come up with good, solid football reasons why, because what we've seen the last two years hasn't been good. It's been three and nine, two and ten, and it's not like it's, hey, oh, they were just a couple of plays away from being so much better than that. That really hasn't been the case, and it's hard to see how this group of guys that they've put out there and went two and ten this year will just suddenly become a seven or eight win team next year. Now, I would say this. I am not as anxious to fire everybody in the world as everybody else is, as the people who spend their time on message boards. Right. and You know what I mean? I, I think okay. that they, because these guys make a million dollars or whatever, people think that they can just call for a firing of anybody, anytime, anywhere. Everybody wants everybody fired. Roger Goodell needs to be fired. Adrian Peterson better never play football again. On an, in every instance, it seems like, you know, well, from, the, from the crowd, we're hearing fire them, fire them, fire them. I think five years is a nice round number. I would give him the fifth year personally, but what I'm saying to you is, relative to the way business is done in big time college football these days, three and nine, two and 10 gets you fired almost every day. I just want to know though, if there is a vacancy at the University of Tulsa, what kind of a coach do you go after? Sure. Here's a program, you and pay I, I'm, going, I'm going to say what I've been saying on my radio show for the last two and a half years now, that the big five, is separating from the little guys. Absolutely. It's happened. It's, tough. it's going to happen. Tulsa there Bay is through. no way that the University of Tulsa will be able to compete for a national championship or even a top 20 finish in the polls if they continue on this way. So I suggest that if they are going to split the big five, the TUs, the SMUs of the world, fight for their own championship. Yep. and then see where it goes. There were about 15, 12, 15 years ago, Bill Blankenship had a press conference when he was coaching at Union. 
and wanted to know what the future of Tulsa football was because the rumors were going around that they were going to do what UAB is about to do, right? Disband the program. Well, that didn't happen. But I think TU needs to figure out what they want to do, what the future holds for football for, for a Division I lower-tiered team. And even SMU, which is in better recruiting country than Tulsa, as good as the recruiting country gonna here is, is going to pay $3 million to Chad Morris. I, I promise you, TU is not ready to pay their next guy $3 million or even $2 million, and you got to compete with those guys directly. SMU was worse than Tulsa this year, but clearly they're committed to winning long-term in big-time college football at a level that Tulsa is not. So you're right. If you're getting rid of Bill Blankenship, what are we talking about here? Now, they've had success with up-and-comers, especially in men's basketball, but in football as well. And I think that's what they're relegated to in perpetuity. You know what I mean? Go after the next up-and-comer and get really good at hiring the next hot offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator. But even a lot of those guys are not going to take jobs outside the big five if they can help it because people see exactly what you're talking about. There's a separation. The top 65 or 70 schools in college football, because of the TV money, can do it at a level that the little guys just absolutely can't. Listen, TU, as good as they have been over the years, the biggest crowd I ever remember out there was when OU was in the building, sure. or when OSU was in the building. When TU beat Notre Dame, one week later on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, they did not have over 20,000 people 17, in the stadium. Those kind of things, coaches have to think, yeah, they're going to be the up-and-coming coaches. Or If there's a head coaching job in Division I college football, they're going to send their resumes. There's no question. But I want to know how TU plans on financing all of this. They probably had to overpay for Frank Hayes in the basketball department. They're going to have to uh, buy out Bill Blankenship, whatever's rest on his contract. So how much is, is the University of Tulsa willing to pay absolutely. for a football coach? You factor if they all, want to be serious about it. Absolutely. You factor all that in, and I don't, I don't see how 3-9, and 2-10 and 10 is necessarily absolutely you got to fire him. Uh, but obviously it hasn't been great. Now, where did things get away from him in your opinion? Um, not winning the games that they should have won this year. They should have beaten South Florida. A lot they of people have said Texas recruiting. State. Do you see well, recruiting that, as a problem? But I think the names on the list now, I think you've got to give a coach a couple of years to get acclimated to uh, in that regard. Sure. Now, he did it on the high school level, obviously, you know, from the other side, and he did it with working for Todd Graham. But uh, if, you're gonna, if you're going to say, well, he won with Todd Graham's players, then do you need to give him another year or two to win with his players because they are young? What was it in the world today that 17 players are returning? That's right, 17 so, coming back. I, I think the fact that he won with Todd Graham's players and won a conference title, which Todd Graham That's never won, as much. it proves that if he gets the right guys in, he I think win. he is able to coach them. But I think Todd Graham had a unique eye for talent, not just with players, but I think with coaches as well. The guys like Malzahn and Chad Morris, I, Graham brought in some great assistant coaches. I'm not sure Blankenship has that same sort of eye for talent. TU's in a tough situation now because of what we mentioned in a lot of ways. The coaching situations, how much can they pay, and who are, are they going to play sure. on down the road? Because I don't see them being in the uh, top five. Yeah. I think SMU's trying to look like they're serious about it by paying Somebody over there's got some money. All right, we need to take a quick break. We'll be back with more right after this. Obviously, we want to get to Bedlam and uh, Russell Westbrook returning, so stay right where you are on The Rant.